everyone! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Thanks for dropping by. We've got a tiny crochet, tiny little quick fix for you today. We made this granny square covered button on a live stream a little while ago. I promised a quick fix and here it is. I'm going to demonstrate in a single color so that you can turn a regular button into something that's crochet covered using a traditional granny square. And I'm also going to show you what it looks like um, to start with one color and then just easily switch to another. So the rest of this, I only did row one in this in a single color and then row two, row three, and row four are all in white. So very simple. The first two rows are a classic granny square and past that I don't want you to worry so much about stitch count. I want you to think about just closing it into a little bucket shape so that we can put it on top of a button. And that's really all there is to it. So let's grab our hooks, grab our crochet thread. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a couple of little crochet covered buttons together. In order to make our granny square covered buttons, we are using about five yards of a crochet thread size 10. So this is a size 10 crochet thread. This is mercerized, it's 100% cotton. The actual fiber isn't terribly important for your covered buttons, but the said the thread count size is. So once again, that's a size 10 crochet thread, about five yards. You want a pair of scissors, a needle with an eye large enough that your thread can fit through. I'm using a 1.75 millimeter hook, also known as a steel hook zero, but you can use whatever hook size is comfortable with your tension and your size 10 crochet thread. You can use any button type that is roughly one inch in diameter or two and a half centimeters. It can have the shank at the back like this one does, or it can also be one that has holes in the middle. It doesn't really matter. And once you've got it covered, you would still use this button in a project the way you would use it normally, whether you're sewing through the middle or using the little shank at the back. So the button type doesn't matter. The uh, It can be wood, plastic, it doesn't matter. And it can be a little bit larger or a little bit smaller than one inch or two and a half centimeters in diameter. This is a flexible cover and it will, um, it will completely cover or give you a little bit of flexibility if your button is a little bit bigger. So don't worry too much about it being exactly one inch or two and a half centimeters. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We are going to start by making a classic granny square round one. So in this little thing, we've got our little tiny circle or our chained ring to begin. And we've got four shells or three double crochet per shell and they're each separated by two chains. So I'm going to show you that just so you kind of have it in your head before we start working on it. When you're working with thread, it's very, very small. It's a little bit fiddly. So sometimes it helps to see sort of the finished row before you get going. We're going to take our crochet thread and start with a slip knot. We're going to make a chained ring to begin. So we're going to chain five. And once you've got a chain of five, you're going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain you make, you made, I should say, to make a ring. This is really small, so be patient with yourself. Sometimes it uh, takes a little bit of getting used to. If you're not used to using a small hook and thread, you've got to kind of have to get your fingers used to working in a tiny little small space. But the more we add to this little ring, the easier it will become because we've got more to actually hang on to. That is our chained ring. We're going to work all of the stitches of row one into the middle of this ring. Your classic granny square starts with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. We work two more double crochets into that chained ring. And that gives us our first complete shell. So chain three, two double crochet. That is our first shell. It's already getting a little easier to hang on to. For the corner, we're going to chain two. I'm working over top of my short tail, but you don't have to. You can leave it out and weave it in later when you're done. Now we're going to work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two, into the ring. And that will give us a complete granny square row, or row one of a classic granny square. At the end of the row, you should have 
four shells and four chain two spaces. So that's chain three, two double crochet to begin, chain two, and then three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two. We're going to finish the row by joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that began. Remember that chain three counts as a double crochet. And there is your itty bitty little center for your granny square button cover. At the end of row one, if you are changing colors, like I'm doing for this green centered one, you're going to fasten off and weave in your tails. So you can just weave them in around the back there, underneath that sort of center area. If you're not changing colors, you're going to slip stitch across the next two double crochets. Try not to slip stitch too tightly or too loosely. And you're going to slip stitch into that chain two corner. If you're not changing colors, you're going to join your new color with a slip stitch in any of the chain two corners. So join your yarn or your crochet thread with a slip stitch in any of those chain two corners. Otherwise, if you're not changing colors, we're already in the chain two corner. We are going to chain three. We're going to work two double crochet. That completes the first shell. Chain two for the corner, and before we leave that space, three more double crochet. And we are working row two of a standard traditional granny square. So each corner space from row one gets shell, chain two, shell, chain one. We're going to chain one just to hop over top of the existing shells from the previous row. Into the next corner, you work three double crochet or one shell. Chain two, and then three more double crochet or one shell. And chain one. So every corner, and you do this four times in total, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain one. And you're gonna do that all the way around or four times total because you have four corner spaces from the previous row. And that will be row two of a classic granny square made in crochet thread complete. At the end of row two, you'll have shell, chain two, shell, chain one in each of those four corners all the way around. Don't forget after you work your last three double crochet or your final shell to chain one because you still need to hop over top of that middle shell from the previous row. And we're going to find the top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch. And that is row two complete. If you're changing colors, you can fasten off. You want to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the same place that you fastened off for no longer working from the point of a corner. This is basically where our little classic granny square uh, design ends and we now turn it into the button cover that it's going to become. So right from where we are, we're going to chain two. This chain two counts now as a half double crochet and we are going to slowly decrease the spread of our granny square because we want to turn it into a little cover. We're going to slowly decrease all the way around. So all stitches and spaces are treated as a place to put a stitch. The chain two corners are just treated as a sort of single space. We're not worrying about putting two stitches or anything in there. And this is what it's going to look like. The chain two that began counts as a half double crochet and now we're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. So yarn over, pick up a loop in that next stitch, and then I don't bother yarning over a second time. I like my half double crochet two stitches together to be a little on the thinner side. So just pick up a stitch or pick up a loop in that next stitch. So I only bother to yarn over once. That gives me four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull back through everything. And that is half double crochet two stitches together. We're going to half double crochet into the corner space. And now we're going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. So I yarn over, pick up a loop in that next stitch, and then I just pick up a loop in the stitch after that. So I have four loops on my hook, 
yarn over, pull back through everything. Into the next stitch, which is over here, we're going to half double crochet. So you're half double crocheting and then half double crocheting two stitches together. Remember, we're treating our spaces like a stitch. So this is a space. I'm going to half double crochet the next two stitches together. I'm treating the space as a stitch and I'm picking up a loop in the next stitch, which is the first of those three double crochets from the previous row. Either way, I've got four loops on my hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. So treat your spaces like a stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and then half double crochet the next two together. So it's half double crochet, half double crochet, two stitches together. Half double crochet, half double crochet, two stitches together. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Remembering that whether it's a stitch or a space, you just treat it like a stitch. And at the end of this row, half double crochet, half double crochet, two stitches together, you'll be down to approximately 22 stitches in total. Now it's very small work, so give yourself a little bit of patience, but basically you are now rounding out that little granny square, you are decreasing the stitch count, so you are turning it into a little bit of a cover. Half double crochet, half double crochet two stitches together, and you're just going to slowly work away at that all the way around. Don't worry too much about the stitch count, it's more the shape that you are aiming to get. And I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. When you get all the way back to the beginning, like I said, don't worry too much about your stitch count. You'll have around 22, but the exact stitch count isn't important. What is important is that you've sort of turned that little granny square into a rounded little bucket shape. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two that began the row. There we go. That's the end of row three, and now we want to insert our button. So you're going to take your button, and you're going to take the front of it, and you're going to put it front or right side facing into the actual button cover. Now, if you're using a button that's got sort of holes in the middle of it like this, you can decide which side you like better. If you want that side sort of facing out, or if you want this side facing out, it's the right side of the button that you want facing out or facing through the granny square side. So just slip your button in there, and it's like putting on a sock. You kind of have to stretch it over top of the shape of your button a little bit, just sort of smoosh it around with your fingers. There we go. And you'll have something that looks like this. So you'll see the right side of the button showing through. That middle of the granny square will really be highlighted and you'll have a little bit of coverage just creeping around the edge of your button. Next thing we want to do is put our hook back in our working loop and tighten things up. And for row four, the final row, we are just going to close in this area a little bit. Really simple. We're going to chain one. So make sure I haven't got any extra loops here. We're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. Again, you don't have to worry about your stitch count. This isn't super important. All you're doing is grabbing a loop in each of the next two stitches and single crocheting. So it's just single crochet, two stitches together all the way around. You don't have to worry about being super tight. All we're doing is closing in the edge of the button. So if two single crochet in each stitch all the way around feels like a lot. If you struggle with it, then you can just single crochet two together as much as you can. But just take your time. And what's going to happen is you're going to be slowly kind of curving in, you're pulling in that edge, you're closing it in so that it won't want to fall off your button. So that's mainly what we're going for here. And if at the end of this row you feel like it's just not tight enough or it's still kind of open, you're going to fasten off and you can leave yourself a long tail 
and you can cinch up the inside edge of the button. So you would take that tail and weave it in and out of those stitches in your last row and just cinch it shut. But as you can see, as I single crochet two stitches together, I'm getting a nice little closed in edge and it'll be just enough that my button won't want to come popping out. At the end of that row, you'll have around 10 stitches. So that's 10 times that you single crochet two stitches together. Just slip stitch to the first stitch of the row and you can fasten off. Now, this is a decent opening. You can access the back of the button. If you used a button with holes in the middle, you'll have access to the middle of the holes. But if you feel it's uncomfortably open or a little loose, go ahead, cut yourself some tail and you can weave it through those last few stitches and cinch it shut. Otherwise, you can fasten off your thread You grab your little needle now thread up that tail and like I said you can sort of weave it in and out through those stitches and you can sort of cinch it as you go and that will help keep that button from wanting to pop out. Then if you don't feel it needs any cinching or you feel it's you know, you've cinched up enough. You can just, like any other crochet project, you want to take your yarn, or in your case, your thread, and weave it through some of the stitches, back and forth, back and forth, just so it doesn't want to come undone. And once you feel like it's pretty snugly sort of woven in, you can trim any excess. When you go to trim it, be careful that you're trimming your yarn and you're not accidentally cutting any of your crochet. Kind of neat, eh? I like it. I think it's a neat way to take an ugly old plastic button or just maybe some buttons that you're kind of done with. Maybe they're scratched or something and they can still be useful. You can cover them in some crochet, in this case, an actual granny square, and you can go about using them as regular buttons. You can also turn them into jewelry, you can use them in other craft projects. There's a lot you can do with a crochet cover button. Um, I've got some Christmas ornament ideas in mind for a few months down the road, perhaps. We shall see how that goes. Um, but it's fun to experiment with your thread and your small hooks. And if you're new to small crochet, um, this is a nice quick little project. It gets you used to working really, really tiny and um, you get something kind of pretty for the stash afterwards. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed today's little crochet quick fix. We will see you again here soon on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. <laughs> Bye guys. Hi everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.